Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to this series of uh, three phase uh, circuits. And in this question, basically, we will be doing some uh, power uh, calculations. So here, what do we have here? We have uh, two loads. Uh, the first load is consuming 400 kVA at a power factor of 0.8 lagging. The second load, we don't know how much power is consumed, but we are given the impedance of the load as 10 plus J8. We know that this load is connected uh, as Y and the second load is connected as, as Delta. We are giving the impedance of the line, okay? And we are giving the voltage line to line at the load side, which is equal to 2,400 volt. Okay, first we want to find the real and reactive power consumed by the two, the two loads, okay? So, We'll start with this part. So we want to find P total, which is equal to basically P1 plus P2, the power that is consumed from the first load plus the power consumed from the second load. And Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q, Q2. Okay. So that's this is the first part. How to find P1 and P2? We'll start with load number number one what do we know about load number one we know it's s1 as a parent power equal to 400 kva and the power factor is equal to 0.8 lagging so definitely the best thing here is the power triangle so we know s this is 400 and we know theta theta is actually cosine inverse of this so cosine inverse of 0.8 will give me my my theta i will call this is as my theta one uh, which is equal to 36.887 so we we know theta now i want to find p1 p1 is simply s1 cosine theta one okay so this is equal to 400 and we already know cosine theta one, which is the power factor, is 0.8. So this is equal to 320 kilowatt. Now, what is Q1? Q1 is basically S1 times sine of theta one. Now, sine of theta one will be equal to 0.6, sine of uh, 38.87. So S1, which is equal to 400, times the point 0.6 is equal to 240 kvar so very straightforward very simple now how to find p2 and q2 knowing the phase voltage sorry the line voltage and actually it is the phase voltage for the delta and the impedance now the safest approach to do this is to use the following formula okay let's derive this formula s2 is equal to three times V phase I phase conjugate. Okay, now V phase and I phase, they are vectors, they have an angle. There is an issue in this, uh, in finding an angle when we have multiple loads, and I will uh, highlight this uh, issue later on. But bear with me, I will derive a formula that doesn't have an angle in it which make it very easy to deal with. So this is equal to three V phase. Now I phase is nothing but V phase divided by Z, of course, of the phase conjugate. Now, when we multiply a quantity with its conjugate, you get only the magnitude and there is no angle, regardless what is the angle is, okay? Because when you multiply a vector, it has an angle, let's say theta, its conjugate has an angle of minus theta. So you, you will take out the angle. So this will equal to three V, v, v uh, phase square as a magnitude only. There is no angle here divided by Z conjugate, which we know. Okay, very, very good. So S2 is equal to three. Now V phase is delta is the same as V line, 2400 square divided by Z 
conjugate, which is 10 minus J8. Now, when you do the calculations, you will find this is equal to 1053.7 plus J842.9 KVA. So I know S2, I know S1, which is P1 plus JQ1. So I can find S total which is equal to S1 plus S2. You add the real power with the real power, the reactive power with the reactive power, you will get 137, 1,373.7 plus J1082.9. So this is your P total, and this is your Q total. So with this, we know the first requirement. Now, the second requirement, we want to find this current I line, which is this current. Now, to find this, I will use two different approaches. The first approach is, a, now this is part P, I will call it PI. Now, this is, I will call it the safe approach, and we'll see why it's a safe approach. From, from S total, I can find the apparent power total, just the magnitude of this, and this is equal to 1748.7 kVA. This is equal to root 3, V line, I line, everything is a magnitude, so your I line is equal to 1748.7, 10 to power 3, divided by root 3, times the line voltage, which is 2,400, and this will give me 420.7 amps. Problem solved, we, we, we are done, okay? Very straightforward, knowing the total S equal to root three V line I line, then you can find the magnitude of I line, okay? Now, I will go now P double I, which is, the risky approach, not the safe approach. What I want to find, I will find I1 and I2. Then add the two currents. Sounds easy, but there is a trick here, as we will see. Okay, so we want to find I1. Now, remember, when you add these two currents, you have to add them as vectors. So you need to find the, the magnitude and the angle. And here is the issue. As we progress, we will see it. Okay, your I1 is equal to S1 divided by root 3 V line, okay? And as we know it, minus cosine inverse of the point 8, which is equal to 400 times 10 to power 3 divided by root 3, and the V line is the 2400, okay? And then the angle is minus 36.87 and this will give me a total current of 96.2 angle of minus 36.87 okay very straightforward very simple very interesting okay this is your i1 now we want to find i2 we know the voltage divided by z you get i2 first you get i phase here and then from I phase, you can I get I, I2, but it's not that straightforward. Why is that? Okay, let's go back here. Now, this is my I1. I1 is equal to, as we just do the, did the uh, calculations uh, here, is equal to 96.2. Okay, so it is 96.2, angle of minus 36.87. Now, what is this angle? This is theta z equal to minus 36.87 plus, of course, okay, which is equal to theta v minus theta i. Excellent. Okay, so this is your theta i. And this is your theta z, the phase, because the power factor angle is the angle of z. Now, it means that theta v is equal to zero of the phase. So it means that the angle of the voltage of the phase, because remember, this is a Y connection. The angle here is zero. 
So what does this mean that the V line will be equal to 2400 angle of plus 30? And this is the trick here. So the V phase, the V line here is will have a 30 degree phase shift with respect to the phase voltage. Because when we did the calculations for the current here, I1, we assumed that the okay, the, the voltage angle in an implicit way is equal to zero. But this is what? This is a Y connection. So the theta V minus theta I for the phase. So it means that the phase angle of the voltage minus the phase angle of the current is equal to this. So it means that I'm assuming in an implicit way that the phase voltage has an angle of zero. So it, this implies that V line has an angle of plus 30. So that is the trick in this question when you go for that approach. Now here you want to find I phase. Now it becomes straightforward. From this you can say that I phase the, ang the current in the phase of the delta is equal to the voltage 2400 angle of plus 30. Remember, now this is a Y connection, so the line to line voltage is the same as the phase voltage divided by 10 plus J, J8. Okay, so this will give me a current equal to 187.35 and an angle of minus. 8.66. Now the current here I2, I2 is basically root 3 of I phase angle of minus 30 with respect to this. So this is equal to 324.5 angle of minus 38.66. So now I know I1 and I know I2. From this, you, would, you want to find U total I, which is I1 plus I2. Now you need to convert both of them into rectangular and then add them. And if you do that, you will find that the current equal to 330.37 minus J260.44. Okay, so first you need to convert this into, into a, a phasor, and this is equal to 76. Uh, point 0.98 minus J57.73. And then you need to convert I2 as well into, into a rectangular, which is equal to 253.39 minus J202.71. When you add I1 and I2, you get this current. Now, when you find the magnitude of I, will find it's equal to 420.7 amps the same current that we found in in the previous calculations here the same the same current but here as i said when you deal with this approach you have to pay attention to the to the angle now for this question we know the connection what if we don't know the connection then you have to use the first approach which i call it the safe the safe approach and which is can be applied to any types of such problems.